What's going on my broskies? My name is Totski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're here to talk about the latest treasure map installment, Treasure Map versus Shirahoshi. So of course in this video today we're going to go through the actual character herself in Shirahoshi and talk about what she does, the character that we're all going to be farming for. Then we'll move on to all of the different battle rush bosses including the final boss and also the intrusion battle against Jinbei in this particular treasure map and we'll also go through free to play teams along the way that are able to beat this particular event. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. So first of all, let's go ahead and get into it by talking about the brand new Shirahoshi character. This Shirahoshi is an int cerebral striker character, and after limit break expansion, her stats are honestly not too bad. She's got 3300, give or take, health, nearly 1700 attack, and almost 600 recovery with 60 cost and 5 socket spots. Now her captain ability is a rainbow 3x attack boost, but her herself will only get a 2 times attack boost, which is a little bit of a downside, and she recovers 2 times her recovery at the end of each turn, so it's nice to have a little bit of a tanky effect with that. As for her special ability, it starts off at 36 turns and you need to get 7 skill ups and then of course after her limit break she goes down to 14 and then with expansion it does actually go down to 13 turns which is very good. But what it does is it will go ahead and reduce damage taken by 50% and recover 8000 HP at the end of each turn for a variable amount of turns. So this can range between 1 turn or 6 turns and it's dependent on how many enemies are on the field when you launch the special. So in a hypothetical situation, if there's three enemies, then you'll get 50% damage reduction and 8,000 heal per turn for three turns. And you know, if there's six enemies, you'll get it for six turns. But that's all she really does. So a lot of people do consider her to be one of the worst treasure map characters in the game because there just aren't too many situations where this character is going to be like the most essential unit to clear that piece of content. So it is a little bit of a downside, but hey, look, it's a new treasure map character. You should probably pick her up because you just never know when you're going to need her, right? You just never, never know. But anyways, now that we've gone through that, let's go ahead and talk about all of the Battle Rush bosses. The intrusion battle is against Jinbei, but on stage 2 you have to deal with Nico Robin. Also as a side note is that only characters that are strength and psi type will get their cooldowns reduced in this intrusion fight, so it's highly advised that you bring characters that are significantly boosted or are characters that are strength or psi type. So against Robin specifically, she has 430,000 health and her preemptive attack has a delay immunity and she puts 3 turns of increased damage taken on your team and all of your orbs are changed into block orbs. And then when you move on to the next stage, on stage 3 against Jinbei, Jinbei has 1.5 million health and he has a preemptive attack that once again has delay immunity, which I think nearly every single boss in this particular treasure map has delay immunity, so it's very annoying. Uh, and then also 3 turns of attack down and paralysis are inflicted to your team, and then he becomes a dex type character instead of the int type that you would think he is. And then on turn 3, he's going to blow away a character and he does that every 3 turns, so you want to make sure that you kill him before that third turn and then below 50% he enrages and then below 20% you're going to take a lot of damage so be careful about it basically just try and kill him as soon as possible don't get him below 50% if at all possible and then as for the free to play team that I'm suggesting for you guys here it does utilize a lot of the more recent characters that have been released we are utilizing a friend captain of Mihawk and Perona because they're just an exceptional captain for this particular fight now as for the other characters here we've got Clash Jinbei as the captain because he is a uh, three times captain to both strength and psi. He has damage reduction effects as well, so if you need a tanker hit, he can enable that. And he's got a color affinity special, um, which is obviously going to help you out. And he also has the ability to remove attack down, which is also inflicted on stage three. And then you've also got Kizuna Moria, who is really good in this particular treasure map because you can get an all boost on one of the mini boss stages and then get an all boost on the, the stage after. He is exceptional in this particular treasure map. We've also got Colosseum Inuarashi because he is a two times attack booster to strength and psi. Very, very nice to have. And then the raid CP9 unit, not the five star plus, but just the regular five star version is also very good here because you can run, you know, the two different CP9s on different teams to get differing effects. And this one in particular is going to be really nice to change block orbs into matching. And then the final character on the team is Nico Olvia, who is a Fortnite unit that is just really nice to bring as she can remove the paralysis that gets inflicted on your team. But overall, very cohesive team and does a lot of damage against this particular boss fight with a relatively high bonus multiplier of 5.97. 
So now progressing through into the Battle Rush stages, the first of these bosses is Manboshi, who is a quick character with 400,000 HP. However, in his preemptive attack, he turns into a strength character. So you still want to be bringing quick units to deal as much damage as possible here. He has a delay immunity and he does a 10% health cut to your team every single turn at the end of the turn um, for 98 turns. And he also has a resilience buff. So having someone to remove that obviously is going to be very, very good here. And then below 50%, he applies a 20 hit combo barrier to himself. So is pretty straightforward essentially making sure that you have someone to remove the resilience or to bypass it in some way like applying poison or an end of turn damage dealing effect that's all you really need in order to kill this enemy. And then talking about the team that I'm suggesting here, Double Raid Douglas Bullet is great here because uh, Douglas Bullet is a 1.35 point boost to this treasure map. So you want to be trying to utilizing him somewhere in your treasure map teams. And then as for the subunits, we've got Treasure Map Smoker and Treasure Map Doflamingo enabling our driven characters, which Douglas Bullet is and also Smoker is and Dofi is enabling those characters to get matching slots. And then the uh, Smoker character can give you an all boost and a chain boost and Douglas Bort has color affinity and then you've got Raid Arlong there and the main reason why he is there is because he can remove resilience but re replacing him with any other style of unit that can remove the resilience or do poison or end of turn damage is all you really need in order to get through this boss. The second of the Battle Rush bosses is against Ryuboshi. He's a strength unit with 450,000 health and a preemptive attack of once again having delay immunity. And he also has two turns of enemy defense up and it's a relatively large defense up. So you need to bring someone to remove that or to just reduce his defense to zero. And also he has uh, the ability to despair your team for five turns. So with sockets, it goes down to a two turn cooldown for that despair. And he cuts your crew's health by 60%. On turn two and then every three turns afterwards, he will keep applying a defense up boost once again. Again, you want to kill him very quickly. Um, and then below 20%, he will despair your team once again. So it's actually a relatively straightforward fight. Just a despair remover and a defense up remover or a defense reducer. Either one of those two um, is all you really need. So the team that I'm suggesting here is a Basil Hawkins captain because he is a striker and cerebral captain. So you can run like a full striker team. But if you have the quick beard or V2 white beard, however you want to call him, he is also a 1.35 point boost to this treasure map. So if you have him, run him as the captain because he has a special that removes despair by himself. So you don't really need to bring another despair reducer if you don't have one. And then treasure map Jack can be used as a sub to remove the increased defense that the enemy has. And then all you really need to do is, is fill out your team with damage boosters. So on this particular example, we've got Raid NL for an attack boost, but obviously if you've got Whitebeard as a friend captain, you're going to be using his special for the higher attack boost anyway. So you can replace NL with an orb booster or something like that, something of that nature. And then we've also got Colosseum Magellan for his conditional boost. So either way, you can switch and change characters as you wish. But if you have V2 Whitebeard, I would suggest bringing him for this fight. The third Battle Rush boss is against Fukuboshi. He's a Psy character with 500,000 health. And once again, he has a delay immunity. And for five turns, he has a percent damage reduction. And also for five turns, he inflicts chain coefficient reduction to your team. Very annoying. And then he also becomes a Dex character. And then on turn two, and every two turns afterwards, he's going to give you block slots and cut your health by 30%. And below 20%, he applies a barrier, a two hit perfect barrier, and he blinds you for five turns relatively annoying essentially you want to kill him as soon as possible before the second turn don't get him below 20 percent so as for suggested characters here this team is a full-on slasher team utilizing treasure map mihawk as the captain very good here because his special ability can provide you a chain locking effect which can completely ignore the chain coefficient reduction that fukuboshi inflicts to your team as for the other characters we've got the five plus version of the cp9 character because he has a special ability that removes five turns of rainbow shield and then when he he switches into your captain spot he is a slasher and driven attack boosting unit so very very nice to have as for the other units here we've got raid rayleigh for an attack boost we've also got jigoro and inupe from the recent kizuna clash that arrived on global his special ability is interesting it changes all orbs including block into strength slots so it enables your strength characters to have matching slots against the Fukuboshi, who is a side character, but transforms into a dex character, giving you that type advantage. Uh, there's also a free spot in this team, you can basically put whatever you want, and I don't really think this is the most ideal team ever, but it does definitely get the job done against Fukuboshi. The final of the Battle Rush bosses is against Neptune, and Neptune is int and has 600,000 health. His preemptive, once again, has delay immunity, and for 5 turns, he inflicts 1.1 times chain lock, and for 5 turns, he inflicts special bind to all characters on your team, and all characters will get tandem slots as well, which is kind of interesting. 
and he applies very similar effects on turn two where he'll give you more special bind more tandem slots and he buffs his own attack as well but just don't get him below 20 percent because he's going to do a lot of damage to your team and then as for suggested characters here it's relatively free in terms of what you want to do here so i've got coliseum hody jones because he can remove the special bind that gets inflicted and then you've also got access to treasure map vivi who came out last month where she has a special that can remove the chain lock and remember when she's fully maxed out she has double special activation so you can remove all turns of the chain lock that's inflicted as well as getting a two times attack boost to all characters very very good unit and then as for the captains well you know you, you got these two units here for utility so zoro and sanji are actually relatively good here because they both boost you know dex and psy characters which works well and they're an orb booster which works well in tandem with the vivi so you can just fill out the team with whatever you want but in terms of free to play the, the versus neptune fight is actually relatively easy to build for so once you've completed all of the battle rush bosses you will going to reach the final boss against shirahoshi however on stage six you have to deal with the mini boss which is rora no Rizoro, who has 430,000 health he is a dex character and has a preemptive attack of five turns of damage threshold and all of your slots are changed into badly matching slots and he will change those orbs to badly matching every single turn but aside from that he doesn't actually do anything else so he's relatively straightforward as long as you remove the threshold and also to make you make yourself get some matching orbs in some way shape or form that's the way to beat Zoro. and then the final boss which is against luffy uh shirahoshi does appear and she does apply like buffs and debuffs and stuff but she actually will just run away the only character you have to deal with is actually the luffy himself so Luffy has 1.25 million on nav level 1, and his preemptive is delay immunity. He has end of turn heal as well that gets applied. Five turns of rainbow shield damage reduction. Luffy has a barrier. You have to hit two greats to actually pierce through and deal damage to him. And once again, as I mentioned, Shirahoshi actually will just run away. You don't have to deal with her at all. And then on turn two, you get given increased damage taken. And then below 50%, Luffy will apply one turn of damage immunity. And once again, you know, he does do things below 20%. I believe it's just, you know, he does lots of damage to your team. Um, but yeah, basically you want to kill him, you know, but make sure not to get him below 50 or 20%. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very bad for you. But he doesn't do anything after the first turn. So if you do need to take a turn to do things, you can actually do that, which is kind of nice. But relatively straightforward for this final boss fight. As for the team that I'm suggesting it's nearly the exact same team that I suggested a little earlier on in this video against the intrusion battle against Jinbei the only difference here is instead of Nico Olvia we have the stampede raid Sabo and the reason why we're bringing Sabo is because he actually will provide color affinity to our side characters whereas Jinbei only provides color affinity to strength characters technically speaking you don't actually need Jinbei on this team at all you could literally replace him with whatever you want really um it's just he's got a really good captain effect uh technically speaking the moria on this team also has a three times captain that boosts uh, strength and side characters as well so you could potentially run that as well replace jimbei with something else if you want to do that but we are running mihawk and perona once again as a friend captain um you could also use the brand new v2 rayleigh he's actually really good here because his special ability on the final boss fight will enable you to bypass all the defensive effects you don't even have to worry about anything and as long as you have matching slots and then you launch rayleigh special it's GG, basically, because he'll provide the two times attack and all boost. And as long as you have fighter and cerebrals on your team, like V2 Rayleigh is a really, really good unit to use for this particular fight against Shirahoshi. But, you know, if you don't have him, it's fine. Uh, Mihawk and Perona still provides enough damage, more than enough damage in order to pierce this because um, he does have a delay immunity. He doesn't have full immunity. So you can actually use the negative status and then the conditional boost from Mihawk and Perona to get like heaps of damage from that. Uh, Dogstorm's really good because we'll be using him against Zoro to remove the damage threshold. As as well as providing an attack boost um, and then Moria can be used on stage six against Zora for an orb boost and then also get the uh get the matching slots and get the uh the orb boost again on stage seven right so that's really really good to have and then the cp9 unit is again used to remove damage reduction on the enemy against Luffy Sabo for the color affinity as we mentioned and then the conditional boost with the Mihawk and Perona so we've gone through all of the different bosses now so this is just a quick team wrap up of all the free to play teams that i've suggested in this video remember the one versus jimbei is the intrusion battle so you are allowed to have the overlap between your other bosses that you've taken on so with the jimbei and the shirahoshi team they are nearly mirror image of each other except switching out nico olvia for the sabo against shirahoshi nico olvia is good with the jimbei fight to remove paralysis whereas the stampede sabo is going to be nice for matching slots if you need it as well as giving you the color affinity 
Unity, which is really good. Um, and then you've got the versus Manboshi team. You just need a unit to remove resilience and then have a bunch of quick units to deal damage. Against Ryuboshi, you want a unit that can remove increased defense and also a unit to remove despair. So Treasure Map Jack and Quick Beard are the two really good units on this particular treasure map that you'd want to be aiming to use in order to clear this a little easier. And then against Fukuboshi, he's relatively annoying. He has a Rainbow Shield for five turns. So this is why we have the CP9 unit in order to get rid of that. And then he is a Dex unit with his preemptive attack. So you want to be building predominantly of, uh, of a strength based team he also reduces your chain coefficient so having a chain locker is a really good way to get around that and then versus neptune he special binds and then applies a chain lock to your team how hody can go ahead and remove the special bind and then vv can remove the chain lock as well as providing you an attack boost and then partnering that with zora and sanji uh, dual unit you can get an orb boost on top of that which is really really good so that's going to wrap up this video today, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.